Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem. This is a postmortem of my Blitz game number uh, 234. I was uh, white here, kicked off with e4. And we got into the Italian game. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop b5 would be the Rui Lopez of the Spanish game, but this is the Italian game, bishop c5. And there's a particular line I've been trying out, or wanting to try out, against um, bishop c5, which is the most common move. The other move that uh, is very typical here is knight f6, uh, two knights defense. And uh, I, have, I have a pretty good line against that. I've, I've just been uh, looking for the best line against uh, bishop to uh, c5 here. And um, of course you can play b4, the Evans Gambit, and I've played that off and on. Um, but that's never really uh, worked out all that well for me. So uh, I wanted to try this line known as the Mueller attack. So you start with c3. Uh, knight f6, counterattacking, so this pawn is hanging here. And then instead of defending the pawn, you play d4. So if you just want to play a, kind of a safe and sane, solid system, you just play d3 here, defending the pawn, and, and you're fine. So uh, it is a fine opening so far. Um, d4 is a bit risky, and uh, see how it goes. Takes, <coughs> takes, but not bad. So bishop b4 check is, is the usual way for black to try and... Um, get some kind of advantage. If he just retreats the bishop here, then um, if we back up, let's see if the engine has any comments. Yeah, leaves leaves white with a strong advantage because you've just got a big center here. So black has to do something uh, active to uh, to counteract what white is trying to do. Um, but this is a good move because it, it almost uh, by force wins a pawn. Now the, the move I'm trying out here, you can um, try bishop d2, knight bd2, and other things, but uh, the Miller attack starts with a move knight c3, and uh, sacrificing a pawn, he just takes the pawn, and then you castle. So this is kind of the uh, initial setup here, and um, if you let the engine think about it for a while, right now it thinks that uh, <clears throat> black's better here after bishop takes c3, but uh, it tends to go towards equality the more the more you let it go. And remember that white is already sacked a pawn, so if the engine thinks it's equal and, and it, white is down material, that means you have good good compensation for the pawn. Um, second point I wanted to make here is that uh, it's very common for people to play knight takes c3, and that's actually a bit of a mistake, and um, and white can get an advantage uh, with with best play there. So, so the most challenging move from black is to take with the bishop. And now here's the, here's the main trick of the Mueller attack. Instead of just taking back the bishop right away, you throw in the move d5. And so now we really have gotten into the Mueller attack. This is, this is it officially. Up until this point, we were just uh, on the path to the Mueller attack, but now we're in it. And now uh, the best move for uh, black is the move my opponent played. So uh, a lot of times people will uh, just make a mistake right here and play some, some bad move and, and you're in good shape. Now, um, of course, you're down a piece, so you have to get a piece back, but there's, there's a number of things going on here. There's this uh, threat on the knight, and there's also the idea of the pin on the e-file, uh, because black has not yet castled. And um, anyway, bishop f... So it says knight e5 could be played here. Okay, that, that's interesting. And that, that's also a line. Let's, let's take a look at that just briefly, knight e5, just so I know what to do. So if black tries knight e5... Seems like a pretty logical move because it's hitting the bishop and it's kind of trying to to save a piece here. How can you uh, save a piece? You can play takes on c3, but queen e2 is the strongest move according to the chess engine. Ah. Again, taking advantage of this uh, <clears throat> attack on the king. So if uh, the knight takes on um, well, the knight could take on f3. How about if the knight takes the bishop, though? What, what happens then? Uh, if the knight takes the bishop, you take the knight with check. Ah, that's an important trick. And, uh, and then you can get the, uh, the, bishop, the uh, knight back. Okay, so that's, I don't want to go into any great detail. I just wanted to know what's the, what's the key idea after knight e5. It appears to be uh, queen e2. So, but bishop f6 is the main move here. And that's what my opponent played. And now uh, rook e1 pinning the knight. I, you could just uh, take this knight 
d takes c6, but uh, it's not quite as good as, as this move here. And so now, um, this is what I was saying, you, you play down the main line and you see that even though white is down a pawn, um, the engine thinks that uh, position is about equal, which means that uh, white has compensation for his sacrificed pawn. So uh, knight e7 is the main move, um, just uh, unpinning this knight, and then you can grab it. And then my opponent played d6, which is the main move. And now this is as far as I knew of the line. So uh, so beyond this point, I was outside of my uh, book knowledge. And uh, I found this move, bishop g5, which uh, turns out to be, uh, that's what I played. And it turns out to be the uh, the top move in the opening book and also with a good score for white. Uh, the engine likes the move g4. So this is another idea. So first of all, let's look at this g4 idea. Um, Oh, in general, uh, I want to say what you're trying to do is you want to take advantage of this uh, the pin on the uh, knight. That's one of your things you have going for you in this position. And so if you can just get rid of this uh, bishop here, um, then this uh, pin will become much more effective because that's, that's one of the supporters of the e7 square. So that's, that's the motivation between bishop g5. And I think... Uh, Bishop g4 has, has, I mean, pawn to g4 has a similar kind of idea. So what's the best reply here? If he castles, you just push on with g5. Okay, and if he plays h6, you play h4. Okay, and uh, again, he could castle, play c6. Ah, play something over on the other side. Say, or queen d7 a6, a5, c6. Yeah, I think c6 is the most aggressive try for black here. And then, can I push on with g5 first? Yeah, maybe g5 right away. And bishop to e5. So we get a position like this. Knight takes e5 as possible. And uh, you would uh, maybe get your pawn back here. Okay, uh, interesting way to play. So maybe that's something worth trying. In the game, I played bishop g5, which turns out to be uh, uh, one of the main moves he takes. I take with the knight. It is all kind of forced. And then he plays h6. And um, here's, uh, here's kind of where I go astray. So the situation is actually... Um, through, through a series of natural moves, actually, uh, white has gotten an advantage in this attack. So you can see this attack has some points. Um, just got to be uh, uh, pretty, uh, <laughs> well, you know, got to be alert as you play this. It's, it's tough to play these in blitz games because you really, uh, it's a kind of attack where you want to stop and think about each move. But if you can uh, learn some of the patterns, and this is a real important pattern that I missed out on. I just retreated the knight here, but I could play the move queen e2. So doubling the pressure on his knight. And if he takes my knight, um, can I just take it? Let's, let's see how this goes out. So I put my queen to e2. He takes the knight. Um, so I'm down a piece, right? But this knight is pinned. Oh, and I bring the other rook over. So now I've got three pieces. So now I am threatening to take the knight. And he's got no way to defend it. The engine is recommending bishop e6. Is the best idea here, <laughs> which uh, surely is not all that great. You can just take. So you're getting your piece back. So um, so that's the key idea is uh, white gets onto this uh, e-file really quickly, and uh, you can even uh, sacrifice the knight here. Okay, so I played the move knight f3, and my opponent uh, castled. And now we're just out of the opening book. That's where the line ends in the opening book. So let's uh, let's look at the notation tab. And um, so even though I didn't play the most precise moves, this this retreating move with the knight, you know, it's never good when you're playing a gambit to have to retreat one of your pieces. You want to try and uh, find those tactical ways to uh, allow your pieces to just keep coming forward. That's that's usually the best way to play a, a gambit. Um, but I still have a lot of pressure in this position because I, I own this uh, e file here. And I maintain that for a while. So queen e2, knight g6, rook e1. So we've gotten the, the triple battery. And uh, I have preserved my knight, but I've just wasted a move by, by uh, retreating it. And uh, 
bishop f5. He gets some counterplay here, getting his pieces out and attacking, but I'm still owning this uh, file. And this move here, h3, so this is where uh, maybe I first, uh, at, up until this point, I would say I've been competitive and, and playing in uh, okay fashion. You know, it's, it's, you're going to miss some of these moves like the uh, queen e2 instead of retreating the knight. But uh, here I just need to play something else. I was a little bit worried about the um, pin on this knight, and the engine recommendation is queen to d2, which would uh, uh, mean there is no pin on the knight. Um, so that, that would have been a way to play um, to keep... Uh, keep chances alive for white. So, But I, this h3 move is, is uh, pretty much giving up uh, whatever compensation I had for the pawn. And now now black is ahead, basically. Pawn up. And uh, yeah, so sort of two mistakes in a row. The first mistake was uh, h3 that I made. I meant to go backwards, back, back. Okay, so my first mistake was this move h3 when I could have played uh, queen d2. He went bishop d7. And now my second mistake was bishop d3. And what it is, uh, the reason for this mistake is very simple. I mean, the uh, source of this mistake <laughs> is uh, I just overlooked the fact that he's going to play knight f4. And uh, you should always think about that when you have your queen and your bishop in a configuration like that. The knight is just naturally going to come in here and fork them. So instead of, uh, instead of bishop to d3, again, I should just move my queen to the d file. Okay. So bishop d3, knight f4, and now uh, you know, uh, uh, black is basically equalized. He's just a pawn up. So uh, um, the game continues. I, maybe there was a way to hold on to that pawn. I didn't really see it. A queen going to the d file it would have been a little better than the c file. Okay. So he takes the pawn with tempo. And now I'm two pawns down, and I'm struggling a bit. Um, but the game continues, and uh, what's funny is that uh, even later in this game, I still had a chance. So, uh, so we'll uh, go forward a few moves. My opponent, by the way, is playing very, very logical uh, and uh, strong moves for the most part. So he was, he was, he was playing well here, and um, so he's increased his advantage by pushing forward his extra pawn, activating his pieces, uh, just doing all the right stuff. And uh, I was in a little bit of trouble. My queen's under attack here. And my uh, bishop is uh, loose. I can't just uh, move my queen away because uh, it'll lose the bishop. So I played this trick where um, I, I deliver a check to get my uh, bishop to a good square. And then, then I move my queen here, hoping to force a trade. It looks like if he plays queen d6 and avoids the trade, um, that I'm just in big trouble. <laughs> so... Uh, I was I was sort of relieved when he when he took, and uh, you'll see that uh, now uh, his advantage isn't as big as it was a minute ago. So that was that was his first uh, that was really Black's first big mistake there. And then the, this was the second one actually taking on f2 because um, it allows this little trick. King here forks the rook and the knight, um, but he's built up enough of an advantage here that uh, he gets he gets compensation for his piece and uh, retains the edge here. So he takes another pawn. I get to grab the uh, knight and uh, plays g3. But now uh, after that move, so so somewhere along here, let's see, was it rook g2? Rook takes f3 check would have been a better try, I guess because he doesn't lose uh, lose a piece then. So now his his uh, his uh, winning advantage has diminished to equality, and uh, it's now an equal game. King e5, pretty much forced. D3, and uh, D3 turns out to be a mistake. Um, and now at this point, White could win with the move King f6. <laughs> So uh, now, uh, in our defense, at this point, we were both low on time, so we were moving kind of quickly here. So neither of us spotted this one. But let's check this out. King f6. Um, and uh, what's the idea? My knight is loose here, which I had overlooked during the game. So it's important. He could just take the knight. But if he does that, then what am I doing? I've got a mate. I've got a bait in three, starting with the move rook takes d3. Yeah, because I've just taken away these squares around his king. I'm threatening the simple rook back here with checkmate. <laughs> oh, very nice. So that king f6, it's all about uh, being aggressive with your king and threatening mate. So he has no time to take the, uh, he has no time to take my knight, and his best try is to play rook e2. 
and I should play rook takes d3, threatening checkmate, and then he needs to retreat his rook. And now I'm just a, well, it's a piece for three pawns, so I need to get something. Knight e5, going after the bishop. So uh, material, you know, if you count the three pawns about equal to a piece, material is even, but uh, it's just the placement and the activity of white's pieces and the mating threats against black's king. Uh, looks like this gives uh, gives uh, white a, a winning edge. It's recommending for black to play a move like uh, well, it's all kinds of different moves appear to be about the same. I'm going to play knight takes c6 and then rook to d7 and just try and uh, <clears throat> destroy uh, destroy white along the uh, back row here. It's, I would think that uh, knight takes um, f7 is a threat too. Okay, well anyway, that that's that variation. Like I said, we were short on time here. So after d3, um, I completely ignored the fact that my uh, my knight was hanging and I played bishop takes d3. And, uh, and he just grabs my knight. And now black is winning again. And uh, he goes on to win the game. I try a few more tricks. Um, but uh, basically he's just three pawns up. And it's too much. So we play on. Yeah, I don't think there's too much to say about this. Um, you know, I'm just trying to get some activity and maybe exchange off some pieces. Um, the one thing to, to note is that um, a rook and a bishop against a rook is a draw. So if I could just get rid of all the pawns, even sacrificing my bishop for the pawns, um, there, there's still hope for a draw. But basically there's too many pawns here. I could sacrifice my bishop for these two pawns, but then he'd have the extra piece and he has still two pawns on this side of the board to... Uh, continue his attempts to win. So after a few more moves, which were all played very quickly, I think we were pretty much just playing on the increment here, um, <clears throat> I, I, I dropped a bishop here. <laughs> right, He had uh, moved his bishop to protect his pawn and it also attacked my bishop and I played rick g7, not bothering to defend it because I, I hadn't noticed that it was under attack. He takes it and uh, I resigned at this point. So that's how the game ended. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Um, leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.